Zelda, let me count the ways! The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass has been one of the most eagerly anticipated titles of the year. The story continues on from Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, which came out on GameCube three years ago. You, that is Link, start on board a ship with Tetra, who quickly gets into trouble and is captured by a ghost ship. As you'd expect, you must travel from island to island, exploring, solving puzzles and defeating bad guys to unravel the mysteries of the ghost ship and rescue the damsel in distress. Now the first thing to mention is the controls. You can use the buttons to quickly access maps and inventory or to equip your secondary item, but that's it. All movement, combat and item use is done by stylus. People who have been playing Zelda games using D-pad controls for the last 20 years may not like the change so much, but it really does add a lot to gameplay. It facilitates greater immersion, especially for more casual gamers, as it is so intuitive and free. And you also get greater accuracy with weapons, which makes combat faster and your secondary items are easier to use. The downside is, the movement can be less precise, and you'll sometimes find yourself slashing with your sword or shooting a cannonball from your ship when you are just trying to change direction. And the rolls are pretty difficult to control too. Another awesome innovation that really uses the touchscreen to its full potential is the fact that you can annotate your maps. Now, I can't overemphasize how cool or useful this is. Gone are the days of keeping a scratch pad by you, or worse, kicking yourself when you realize that you forgot to follow up on a special item hint several islands back. And there are so many other things to get excited about too. The 3D graphics are gorgeous. This is probably the best looking game I've seen for the DS. The faces are animated, and there's lots of sexy background detail like waves, clouds and creatures, and even lighting effects in this little ocean scene. Also, the fixed overhead view when on land is well suited to the gameplay and gives a nice bit of old school flavour. The music is also worth a mention. Although it's simple, it really helps distinguish between the two predominant moods of the game. Dungeon crawly angstiness and happy dopamine fueled contentment. And that's the joy of this game. The world is a real pleasure to escape into. As well as the main quest, which is fairly expansive, there are lots of little side quests or treasure hunts to keep you occupied, and the world is littered with NPCs to chat to and their little shops and houses to poke around in. The main NPCs have all been really well designed. They are quirky and amusing and have real depth to their characters. And so, to the big debate. Is it too easy? No doubt Nintendo have made this title incredibly accessible, and this is great as now kids and casual gamers will be able to just immerse themselves in the world of Link and Zelda, no problems. But the complaints from more hardcore gamers and Zelda fans is that, in doing this, they've really taken some of the challenge out of it. There is a fair amount of hand-holding from the supporting cast in the first half of the game, but because the quality of the scripting and the characterization is so good, then this is certainly not unbearable. And while you'll probably find the puzzles a little bit easier than you will have done in previous Zelda games, then there's still enough challenge and depth to keep all but the most jaded gamer entertained. Overall, I'd say this is a huge achievement for Nintendo. They've managed to streamline a 3D Legend of Zelda game for a portable console without losing any depth or detail. And they've managed to create a world that is engrossing, charming and very, very addictive. Five stars! Don't forget to have a look at our website, playdigital.tv. And for your link to some other TV goodness, have a look at our other shows at channelflip.com.